In this video, we are going to take a look at Wemis labels. So by the end of this video, you are going to be able to create a Wemis label for any chemical compound. So what is a Wemis label or a workplace label? And when is it required? Well, a workplace label is required under three kind of key situations. First, if a hazardous product is produced or made at the workplace. So that means if we're diluting something and we're using a solution in our workplace, then that would be considered being made or produced. If a hazardous product is decanted, so if it's transferred or poured into a new container, then it would also require a label. And finally, if a supplier label becomes lost or illegible or unreadable, then we would need to create a new workplace label. So let's take a look at the components of a Wemis label. The first thing that you need is a chemical name and preferably to also include a chemical formula as well, although technically it's not required. So on this Wemis label here in red, we have acetone written down at the top. The second component is looking for instructions for safe use. This is a combination of both the risks and the precautions that you can take. So with acetone, those ones are labeled in blue and we're picking the most important precautions and risks here. Finally, the third component is a statement that says the safety data sheet is available. That goes down at the bottom of your label and that is shown in green here. And then finally, because if we're making any sort of uh, dilutions or decanting or anything like that in class, I also want you to include your name on the label as well. So let's go through an example and build a Wemis label. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna come over to this document here. So I found a safety data sheet for potassium chlorate. And so the first thing we need is the chemical name. You're going to find that under the identification part of the safety data sheet. So we're going to come back and we're going to add potassium chlorate up at the top of our label. Now we need to go find those risks and precautions. And there's a couple of places you can look here on your safety data sheet. I think the majority of them you're gonna find under section two, which is your hazards identification. So you can see for this one, it's pretty dangerous, right? So it's got the signal word danger, it's got some hazard statements here, it's got some precautionary statements about how to prevent it, what to do if um, it gets inhaled or it gets on your skin and so on and so forth. So I think in terms of the major things here, looking at the symbols, we can see that it can cause fire or explosion. It's a strong oxidizer. And then it's also harmful if it's swallowed or inhaled. And if we're kind of taking a look at some of these, we might see, you know, take any precautions when avoid mixing with uh, combustibles. We want to keep it away from heat and sparks and flames. We want to wear the pr proper protective equipment. So you're pulling out those key pieces of information that you think are really, really important for the safety considerations. So here are some of the ones I've pulled out uh, for you. Um, I pulled out most of those statements that I just talked about there. The other one I pulled out was in case of fire, how to uh, extinguish this particular uh, fire because I think that's really important information as well. The last key piece we need is that safety data sheet available statement down at the bottom. And then if we're creating a classroom label, you would put your name on this and I would probably put it somewhere top left or top right corner. That doesn't really matter. That's just a key piece for me. So that's how we create a Wemis label. Um, now what you're going to do is go practice this skill and give it a try.